Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is K largest elements and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given an array of n positive integers and an integer k and we have to find the k largest elements from the array right and we have to like return a vector where all those k largest elements should be in decreasing order right so the greatest element should be present in the first position second the second greatest at the second position and so on right so a very 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 straightforward approach which i don't think we need to discuss is that you can just directly sort all the elements and return the kth elements from one side. So if you have sorted in increasing order, then the last k elements and if you have sorted in decreasing order, then the first k elements. But obviously we will not be using this approach. Although the approach that we are going to discuss is like not very much better from this particular approach like sorting all the elements, but it is definitely a step ahead. And talking about this particular complexity that they have mentioned here, like uh, I really couldn't figure out a way that could exactly fit this particular complexity. I don't know like why they have written this, but we will be talking a solution which can work in n log k time, right. So like uh, let me just take the sample test case also so that I can explain you and then we can discuss the problem. So this problem is like fairly simple. You see that 787, 787 is the greatest element. So it is present at the first position. Good enough. Now 23 will be the second greatest element and it will be present in the second position. So the k value of k was 2, so we found the first two greatest elements and if the value of k was 3, so the next element would have been 12, if the value of k was 4, the next element would have been 5, if the value of k was uh, 5, the next element would have been 1, right. So this is how this particular problem works. Now uh, a very valid way that we discussed was to sort the elements, sort all of them. The total time complexity to sort the elements will be n log n and you can just directly take k elements, right. So if you sorted in increasing order, then the first k elements, otherwise the last k elements. Okay. Now a second way to solve this problem be using a priority queue or a heap. Right. You can also call it a heap. Again, there are two ways of using this heap in this particular problem. Either you can use a max heap. Either you can use a max heap. So the property of max heap is that it stores the greatest element, greatest element at top, right. This is the property of max heap. Now what you can do is you can store all the elements in a max heap and then you can just pop the top k elements, right. And this will give you the top greatest k elements, right. So this is one way of solving this using a heap. Now what if instead of a max heap you maintain a mean heap. Right. So this is a little smarter approach than all the other approaches that we have discussed and its complexity will be a bit different. Even in this case, the first case, in the first case which we use max heap, the total time complexity will be n log n. Right. Because the, the size of the max heap will be at max n. So log n will be a constant factor for each operation and n is the number of operations. And in fact, it will be not n, it will be n plus k. Because in the first n operations, you will be inserting all the elements, then we will be like popping out all the top elements. So it will be n plus k log n to be precise. Now what happens in the case of a mean heap? Can we like uh, improve our answer with the help of a mean heap? Yes, definitely we can. So what we can do is, we can push the first k elements. Push first k. First k elements. Right. So. The property of max heap was the greatest element was at the top. Now the property of mean heap would obviously be that the smallest element is at the top. So if I push the first k elements, let's say I'm just trying to simplify the mean heap. So if, if I push the first two elements like this 12 and 5, so 5 will be at the top and then 12, right? This is not how a he actual heap looks like. I'm just like writing it for the sake of understanding. Now I have 5 at the top and 12 at the bottom. Now I encounter my next element 787. So I will check whether 787 is greater than my minimum element or not. If it is greater than my minimum element, then I will remove this minimum element and I will push 787 instead. So if I do this, 12 will come at the top and 787 will go at the bottom because it is the greatest. Now the next element is 1. Now I check whether 1 is greater than my smallest element in the heap or not. It is not greater. That means I, I, do, not, I do not have to push it into my queue or heap. Right. 
Now the next element is 23. I check whether 23 is greater than my smallest element or not. Yes, it is greater than my smallest element. So I'll pop this top element and I'll push 23 instead. So 23 will be like this and 787 will be like this. So let me just explain what you have to do. So now all you have to do is steps, steps for solving the problem. So the first step is to push first k elements into the heap, mean heap to be precise, right. The second step would be after, after the first k elements for each element, check whether, whether it is greater than the top of the heap, right. So if it is greater, if greater, then pop the top element and push new element into heap, right. So this is how you will have the topmost key elements, right. So once you have these elements, what you can do? So at the end, your heap will look something like this. For example, this is your smallest element one, this is your second smallest element two, this is your third smallest element three. So if your answer is of size three, you can write one, you can take one and write it here and then pop it from the priority queue or the heap, whatever you can call it. Then you can put two here and then pop it from the heap and then put three here and then pop it from the heap, right. So this is what you'll do. You will push the first k elements into the main heap and after the first k elements, we just have to check for each of those indexes, right. And once we are done with this, we can easily solve this problem. So let us have a look at the code now. I have created a priority queue. So this is an inbuilt data structure with C++ STL, which helps me to like create a heap, right. So I have I've passed some arguments to it, which will help me to create a mean heap. Uh, by default, it generates a max heap. So that is why I have to do this to create a mean heap. Now, I just push the first k elements into my priority queue. And after the first k elements, for all the other elements, what I'll do is, I'll check if array of i is greater than priority queue dot top. If it is greater than priority queue dot top, then I'll pop it from my queue and push my array of i. And I'll just uh, like uh, uh, copy my answer from the priority queue to my answer vector. Right. So what I'm doing is I'm traversing from the back and for each for each index, I'm setting my answer as priority queue dot top and I'm popping the element from the priority. Right. And I can just directly run my answer. So what will be the exact time complexity of this particular approach? You see at each instance, the maximum size of the priority queue is k, right? So each operation should be log k, right? The total number of operations are n log k. And if you want to be like more precise, it is n plus k log k, right? So this would be the exact time complexity. And you will see that this is uh, like a little bit better than this one, which is n plus k log n, right? Now it depends the, on the value of k. k is definitely less than or equals to n. But in some cases, k will be much smaller. So that in, the, in those cases, this will yield a much better result, right? So it's just that this constant factor will reduce and this factor will remain the same, right? So let us uh, like just quickly submit this particular code and see if it works. So you see that it passes all the test cases and this approach is absolutely correct. And I hope that you guys were able to understand this particular solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments or if you have an approach which can work in this particular time complexity, then definitely write it down in the comments. I would love to read that. And uh, your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So subscribe to the channel because I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.